Manifesting is a hot topic now, with social media videos aplenty teaching you how to conjure up anything from the perfect boyfriend to a new Taylor Swift album. And one of the most effective ways to manifest is to actually know how to visualize things. But what most people don't know is that creative visualization and imagination are more important to manifesting your desires than the techniques themselves. If you learn to master your imagination and visualizations, you will no longer need any technique to manifest what you want in your life. You will be able to manifest the biggest and seemingly impossible desires if you learn the art of creative visualization. But how can you master your imagination? How can you learn the art of creative visualization? This is what we are going to discuss here in this video, in light of Neville Goddard's teachings. So stick around to learn how you can use your imagination to manifest what you want. And if you are new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe to it by clicking the red subscribe button below this video, and don't forget to press the bell icon to receive a notification whenever we upload a new video on this channel. Let's now get right into it. While mastering your imagination is definitely the most important skill, and you must be an expert at using your imagination creatively because the use of creative imagination allows you to visualize the different aspects of your desire, enabling you to quickly manifest it in 3D. Your imagination is the foundation of every single experience. Your imagination allows you to experience these things. Others might experience the same thing in a different way than you, and it's because they have a different imagination. They are imagining the same thing from a different angle. From the moment you come into existence in the world till the moment you die, you are using your imagination to create things. Too many people who don't know how important their imagination is are creating a whole bunch of stuff that they don't want to manifest in their lives. So the most important thing here is to master your imagination and direct your flow of consciousness into whatever it is that you desire to experience. Let me tell you that your consciousness is the foundation of your imagination, and your imagination is the foundation of your experiences. If you grasp what I mean by this, you will become the master of your life. Let me explain to you how your consciousness, your imagination, and your experiences are linked together and how your consciousness affects your experiences. What I believe is that consciousness isn't only the cause of experiences, consciousness is the cause of existence. You see, if you aren't conscious of something, it doesn't affect your thoughts. If you aren't conscious of it, you can't think of it. You can't see it, even if it exists in your life. And as you know, when you can't see it, feel it, or imagine it, you can't have any thoughts about it. Thoughts are the cause of your actions, decisions, reactions, and responses to certain situations, events, and happenings. So if you don't have any thoughts about it, it can affect your decisions, your actions, or your life in any way. What I'm trying to explain to you is that if you aren't conscious of something, it can affect your life in any way because you can't think about it, you can't feel it, and you can't imagine it. Now let's take a glance at what happens when you become conscious of something. Well, consciousness is the first step, and imagination is the second step. When you become conscious of something, you can imagine it. You can have thoughts about it, you can imagine different aspects of it. It implies that it can now affect your experiences and your overall life. In what way it affects your life completely depends on what sort of thoughts you have about it and how you imagine it. That's how consciousness, imagination, and experiences work. Let me put all that in one single sentence. When you become conscious of something, you allow it to affect your life. But what way it affects your life depends on how you imagine it. The importance and role of your imagination are obvious, but the question is how you can master it because when you can control and direct your imagination, you can manifest your desires, no matter what they are. Before we learn how to master the imagination, first I want you to learn how your imagination produces experiences in your life. Neville Goddard says that our mind consists of two main parts, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Psychologically, these two parts of the mind and the interaction between them determine the experiences in our lives. Our conscious mind gathers data from all the senses that help us be conscious of things. How do we become conscious of things and their existence? We use senses, like the sense of hearing, eyesight, and the sense of tasting things. We use all these senses to be conscious of things. The sense of hearing enables us to know the sound of something. The sense of taste allows us to taste foods and other things. These senses send the data to our conscious mind, and on the basis of that data, the nature of our thoughts is determined. For example, if your eyesight tells your conscious mind that a particular thing is incredibly beautiful, then you will probably be surprised. And if your sense of smell tells you that a particular thing has a bad odor, you will move away from that place. The crucial concept for you to understand is how the conscious and subconscious minds are interlinked. 
Well, Neville Goddard suggests that although our conscious mind is the cause of our consciousness, the conscious mind doesn't affect our reality much because your perception is more important than your consciousness. How you perceive a particular object or thing is of immense importance. The appearance of a particular thing, or its size, color, taste, or sound, has no meaning at all. It is your perception that gives meaning to it. You see, two persons can have entirely different views about the same thing, let's say voice. For one person, a particular audio track may be very soothing, but for another, the same voice can be very noisy. Why are their views about the same thing different? Well, it's because the two people are perceiving the same voice differently. So the question is, what is the thing that shapes our perception? Perception is developed over time. As you grow older, your views about things change. The things that used to be beautiful some years ago can be very ugly to you right now. Time is the basic factor in developing and shaping perception, but there are various other elements that affect the development of your perception, for example, where you have been living, whether your family was rich or poor, what religion you follow, what is your education, and what beliefs you are carrying. Let me tell you that again, it is your consciousness that determines your perception. What I'm trying to explain to you is that our conscious mind allows us to be conscious and aware of things, their existence, their nature, their characteristics, and their qualities, but consciousness alone doesn't produce our experiences or our reality. It is actually our perception that determines the nature of our response to a particular thing or situation, and it all ultimately defines what sort of experiences we are heading to have. Our conscious mind, in collaboration with our perception and subconscious mind, produces the reality that we experience in our lives. Our subconscious mind is the key element here. As we have discussed, becoming conscious creates thoughts in our mind. But what's important to understand is that not all thoughts affect our life. We become conscious of hundreds of things each day, and they create millions of thoughts in our minds. But not all the thoughts affect our reality. Just a fraction of thoughts is passed to our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind depends on what's coming from the conscious mind. The subconscious mind affects our lives. It acts like a program machine that already knows what sort of output to give in a particular situation. The thoughts passing from our conscious mind to our subconscious mind can be termed instructions or inputs, and what we experience, what we do, and what sort of attitude we carry in real life are products and outputs of that. So the actual question here is how you can direct your conscious mind to send only some particular and chosen thoughts to your subconscious mind so that you can experience only the desired things in your real life. Well, the answer to that question is using creative imagination and visualization. Our imagination is actually our perception. We are already conscious of something, but how we imagine it and what we think and feel about it is how we are perceiving it. So to change your perspective, you have to master the creative imagination and visualization. And to do that, what I suggest is to know your higher self. What is your higher self is? Your higher self is the version of you that you want to be. Know who you want to be. When you are clear on who your higher self is, start making use of your creative imagination. Means start imagining that you already have become who you wanted to be or that you already have gotten what you wanted to get. Not only imagine, but do that creatively. Now here is the need to explain to you what creative imagination is or how you can imagine creatively. Imagining creatively is similar to thinking creatively. It means don't just assume your desire, but imagine the after effects of your desire. What will happen when you successfully manifest your desire? What will you do after manifesting your desire? Let's say you want to manifest $1 million. Don't just think about $1 million. Think about what you will do after getting $1 million. Think about that creatively. Maybe you will buy your dream car. So what will you do after you buy your dream car? Perhaps you will go on a long drive with your wife or your girlfriend. Maybe you will buy a new brand of home. So imagine living in that home with your family. Imagine something creative like that. Adding creativity to your imagination helps you know why you want something to manifest in your life. It helps you figure out what other people desire, which will automatically manifest once you manifest your biggest desire. The best way to imagine creatively is to write about a scene that will possibly take place when you manifest your desire. For example, if you want to manifest money, write a scene that will reflect what might happen when you receive the amount of money. Perhaps you will receive a message on your smartphone telling you that you have received millions of dollars in your bank account. You will be surprised and you will check your bank account. Upon seeing the amount in your account, you will be excited. After that, you probably will share this good news with your family, and then you will go to the bank to withdraw some money and go shopping to buy all the things you desire. 
So that's how you can create a scene. As we have discussed, consciousness is the foundation of your imagination. So first, be conscious of what it is that you want and then imagine it creatively. When you finish writing a scene that explains what may possibly happen when you manifest your desire, visualize this scene again and again. The best time to visualize this scene is right before you go to sleep. If you go to sleep while visualizing it, you will manifest your desire in a few days. Experts say that when you are tired and go to bed, your mind is more likely to accept whatever you want to put into it and not resist. When you manifest that time, it will believe the scene to be true because you are a master of visualization. So this scene will be passed to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind will automatically manifest it in the physical world since the subconscious mind accepts everything coming from the subconscious mind. So guys, that's how you can make use of creative visualization to manifest your desires. If you understand and employ this, you will no longer need any technique to manifest your desire. Your imagination will enable you to do so effortlessly. I hope I was able to deliver a good analysis of this quote by Neville Goddard. And of course, this doesn't mean we agree with every single thing he said or believed in, because in the end, everyone will form his or her own opinion, and that is why we are analyzing and discussing his ideas and methods to fully understand his approach and general ideas, as he was a great mystic and writer in the previous century. His teachings have brought revolution and a complete change to the lives of millions of people. People who studied his teachings and applied them to their lives became successful in every part of their lives. If you want to share your opinion, comment down below this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon for more interesting, informative, and helpful videos on manifestation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.